لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Respected viewers Welcome back to our program The Perfect Example on the life and the lessons learned from the Mubarak and blessed example shown to us by our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the previous programs, we had studied and looked at why the life of our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the perfect example. We had looked upon it from various angles and we had indicated that given the fact that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life is authentically preserved, given the fact that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life is perfect, it is comprehensive and it is also practicable. It is therefore the most perfect example to follow. Let us now carry on and look at the life of our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in doing so, we start off from the lineage of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are many aspects that are miracles because of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The lineage of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also a miracle due to the personality, the excellence and the greatness of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The biographers and the genealogists have stated that the Prophet Wasallam's lineage has three phases. The one phase is from our beloved Nabi Karim Wasallam to one of his forefathers known as Adnan. That is pretty accurate and it is by and large accepted by the historians. The second stage of the, of the lineage of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is from Adnan to Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. And the third stage is between Hazrat Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam right up to the father of humanity Hazrat Adam Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. Historians say that the first one is pretty accurate. The latter stages, the latter two periods from Adnan to Ibrahim alayhi salam and from Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam while it is recorded in the books of history it cannot be said that it is authentically preserved. This is what the historians have made mention. Let us look therefore at the one aspect of the lineage of our beloved Nabi Karim sallam which goes up to Adnan. Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Mutallib, who is the grandfather of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, also known as Shaiba, ibn Hashim, also known as Amr, ibn Abd Munaf, also called Al Mughira, Al Qusay, called Zayd. Qusay is very, very influential, as we will go on to make mention. Ibn Kilab ibn Murrah. Ibn Kaab, Ibn Luay, Ibn Ghalib, Ibn Fahar, who was also called Quraysh because of which the Quraysh finds its name. Ibn Malik, Ibn Nadar, also called Qais, Ibn Kanana, Ibn Khuzayma, Ibn Mudrika, Ibn Ilyas, Ibn Mudar, Ibn Nidar, Ibn Ma'ad, Ibn Adnan. That is the first phase of Nabi Karim Sallallahu lineage up to Adnan. Thereafter, you have the phase Abdul Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Also, the maternal lineage of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasalam reads like this Muhammad bin Amina bin Amina bin Tiwahab bin Abd Munaf bin Zuhra bin Kilab bin Murra. That means that the maternal lineage meets up with Kilab bin Murra from amongst the paternal, paternal lineage of our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu in the sixth stage of the lineage. Now, 
We can go on make mention of many of these forefathers of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Maybe a good reference point and a good starting point would be the father of the Anbiya Alayhi Musalatu Wasalam, Hazrat Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. We know that Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasalam is revered by all religions. He is revered, revered and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made mention of this in Surah Ali Imran. And Allah Ta'ala says, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيَّ وَلَا نَصْرَانِيَّا Many people would like to lay claim upon Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah Ta'ala says, he was not a Yahudi or a Jew or a Christian, but he was a Muslim, the one who submitted to the will of Almighty Allah, which is the hallmark of Islam and the hallmark of a Muslim. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam had two sons. And one son was Ismail, one son was Sarah. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam was once traveling with his first wife, Hazrat Sarah. And on the way, they met a king who had evil intentions with regard to Sarah. And through the means of a miracle, whenever the king wanted to lay his hands upon Hazrat Sarah, his hands so became paralyzed. It is also related that the king had a unique type of criteria in that he should not lay his hands upon someone who was the sister of someone who was in his, in his presence. So when he asked Hazrat Sarah who she was, she said that she is the sister of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Although she was the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, she was also the sister in faith to Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Nevertheless, when he could not, due to seeing the miracle that every time he wanted to lay his hands, his hands so became paralyzed. Thus, he gave over a slave and a bondswoman by the name of Hajar to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam from Hajar who conceived and from Hazrat Hajar was born Hazrat Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. And thereafter from Hazrat Sarah was born Hazrat Ishaq alayhi salatu wasalam, whose son Yaqub is also known as Israel and gave birth to the Bani Israel. So therefore when we hear it being said that the Arabs and the Jews are cousins, it refers to the starting point of the child, children of Ad Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. One was Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, who was the father of the Arabs and Ishaq alayhi salatu wasalam was the father of the Jews. And Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam leaves Hazrat Hajar and Ismail by the command of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Mecca, which at that time was a plain desert which had no vegetation, no water, but the remains of the Kaaba and Baytullah, which was established as the first masjid on this earth, the remains and the foundations were still there, although it had been buried. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam leaves his wife and his beloved son, Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, in the desert. And when he leaves them in the desert, he goes away by the command of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he leaves away, Hazrat Hajar asks, and said, where are you leaving us in this plain desert with no vegetation, no food, no water? And he does not reply anything because of the command of Almighty Allah. And when Hajar asks, are you leaving because of the command of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He nods in the affirmative. And she takes solace from that saying that if that is the case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look after us. We all know the incident thereafter, that when food became scarce and there was no water, Hazrat Hajar in desperation starts running between Safa and Marwa in search of water. She runs from the plains of Safa looks beyond, try to see, is there anyone who is there who might be able to assist, comes back to Marwa and then looks from there, does not find anyone. And then she runs up and down seven times, which because of the way she had done it and the ikhlas and the sincerity with which she had done, it has become part of our ritual in Umrah and Hajj in commemoration of the way Hazrat Hajar, the mother of Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, searched for water for her son, 
in the desolate plains of Makkah Mukarrama at that time. And thereafter, she notices that Ismail alayhi salatu was salam with his hill, hills had dug the sand of the desert and water had gushed forth. She comes running there. And when she comes running there, she says, Zum, Zum, stop, stop. And this is the beginning of a well that is still producing water from that time. And it satiates the thirst. And it satiates those in need of blessedness from that time till this present moment. A great accolade to one of the great women in our history. Respected viewers, welcome back. In our previous segment, we spoke about the lineage of our beloved Nabi Karim Sallallahu tracing it back to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and from there, Hazrat Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, who is the father of the Arabs. From that incident, which gave rise to the well of Zamzam, Hazrat Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, and the mother remained in Makkah Mukarramah. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam comes often to come and visit his wife and Hazrat Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, his son. In those times, we are also aware great incidents take place. The incident of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam showing the ultimate submission to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by wanting and by the command of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willing to sacrifice his one and only son at that time, Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. During one of the visits, he also comes and together with Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, they construct from the remains and foundation of the Kaaba and Baytullah first established in the very inception of this universe, he raises again the Kaaba and the Baytullah, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of in Surah Baqarah. وَإِذْ يَرْفَوْ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَعِيلِ And remember the time when Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, they constructed the Kaaba and Baytullah. And after this, a remarkable attribute to their sincerity. They said, رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ عَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Oh Allah, تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا Except from us, you are all hearing and you are all knowing. At that time, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam also makes a dua. رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ O oh Allah, send from my progeny a Rasul of Almighty Allah, a Prophet of Almighty Allah, who will yatlu alayhim ayatika, who will read your verses to people, who will teach them the kitab and will teach them wisdom. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam made dua for the coming of our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasalam. And while Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam's prophethood was destined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the inception of this universe, from the means point of view, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to say, I am the consequences of the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Our ulama also tell us it is for this reason that we as the ummah of our beloved Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we give recognition and we remember Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam in every prayer of ours. Because he asked Allah for our beloved Prophet. And therefore the ummah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam remembers him by reading the Rude Ibrahim in every unit of prayer. Nevertheless, at that time Ismail, together with his mother, remained there. Because of the well of Zamzam, the birds used to flock. And especially in the desert, wherever there is water, it becomes an oasis. And birds and vegetation starts growing, birds flock. The tribe of Jurham, at that time, were making its way from Yemen towards the north, towards Syria, for more better pastures and more better living conditions. When they notice birds hovering around a water hole, they come to Makkah Mukarrama and they see the mother and the son alone. They ask for permission to be able to settle. And Hazrat Hajar gladly gives them that type of permission, maybe also with the intention of some sort of habitation, some sort of, some sort of companionship. And from there, 
Makkai Mukarrama becomes a settled place. People start flocking, people start inhabiting the place. Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam gets married to one of the women of the tribe of Jurham. He gets married and he settles down. The tribe of Jurham remains in control of Makkai Mukarrama for many years. But thereafter, they turned against Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam. Of course, we know that Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam's lineage and his children become known as Bani Ismail. The Jurham were the maternal side of Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam from his wife's side. They turn against Bani Ismail and they start bringing about corruption in Makkah Mukarramah and also treating the people of Makkah, the inhabitants of Makkah with tyranny and oppression and injustice. And there's always been a rule in human history that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps a government and authority going even with disbelief. But when an authority starts oppressing people, then Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not keep it for a very long period of time. In a similar manner, when the Jurham started oppressing the people of Makkah and they forced Bani Ismail outside of Makkah and Mukarramah, the people of Arabia turned against the Jurham tribe. When they returned against the Jurham tribe, they were forced to vacate and leave Makkah and Mukarramah. But as is the want of people who are oppressors, they didn't leave very easily. So what they did was they covered the well of Zamzam and they put many of the blessed relics around the Kaaba and Baytullah. They put it into the Zamzam and they buried the Zamzam in such a way that it could not be easily traced. So in this way, the well of Zamzam, which started off in the infancy of Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, was once again buried to be unearthed later on in Islamic history by the grandfather of our beloved Nabi Karim, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdul Muttalib. Nevertheless, as we carry on, then we find that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grants control of the Kaaba and Baytullah to the tribe of Khuza'a after Jurham. And after Khuza'a, it comes to the Quraysh. The Quraysh were among the most noble and the most honorable and dignified community and family in the Arabian Peninsula. We had made mention of the lineage of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam. However, one of the forefathers of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam who achieves great amount of honor and dignity for the Quraysh was Qusay. Qusay is the sixth grandfather of our beloved Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And he had received great amount of honor and dignity and he was well respected by the Arabs at the time. The Arabic poet had said, Abukum Qusayyun kana yud'a mujamma'a bihi jamma Allahu al-qaba'ila min fihr. Your forefather, referring to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was Qusayy who was hailed as Mujammi. Mujammi means one who brings people together. And he united the Arabs, especially the Quraysh, under his leadership by, by due to him. Allah Ta'ala united all the tribes who were descendants of Fihr. Qusay was a remarkable person. He married Hulayl, who was a daughter of the chief of Khuza'a, bringing the two tribes together. He also was amongst the ones who told the people of Makkah, their people come to visit the Kaaba and Baytullah, they come with the greatest amount of sincerity. Surely we who are the host and the inhabitants of Makkah and Mukarramah, we should be the ones who look after them. We should be the one who should serve them. So in this way, Qusay brings about a whole new dimension to the inhabitants of Makkah and Mukarramah by making them realize that they are the neighbors of the Kaaba and Baytullah. And together with this privilege, they also have a great responsibility the responsibility of the custodianship of the house of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with it also being the host of the people who come for pilgrimage. He was the one who initiated feeding of the pilgrims. He was the one 
who initiated giving water to the pilgrims. So this was Qusayb, one of the very great forefathers of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who brought people together. Also amongst the forefathers of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who achieved great amount of respect and honor and dignity, was Hashim. Hashim's real name was Amara. And the word Hashim comes from the root word Hashim, which means to crush. And the reason why he was known as Hashim was, he used to crush bread, make bread into small pieces, into gravy, with the intention of feeding the pilgrims. Therefore, he was known as Hashim. His real name was Amr. He also, from his grandfather and his forefathers, Qusay in particular, started feeding the pilgrims. And he was exceedingly handsome. It is said about Hashim that it, it seemed as if the nur of Nabuat was placed upon his forehead. And the ulama of the previous scriptures, when they used to see him, they used to kiss his forehead. And they even used to offer their daughters to him saying, that get married to our daughter because it seems that from your progeny would come the last prophet of Almighty Allah. In fact, historians narrate that not only that, even the Roman emperor sent an envoy hearing about his fame and of the fact that there is the nur of Nabuat on his face, the emperor of the Roman Empire, Heraclius, sends a message and offers his daughter to Hashim to get married to with the intention of being amongst those who will be the, the parents of the last prophet of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He rejects it. Eventually, he comes to Medina in Munawara and gets married to the daughter of Salma, and her name was Salma, Salma binti Akwa from the Bani Najjar tribe. And therefore Nabi Karim Sallallahu always used to regard the tribe of Bani Najjar as his relatives from the maternal side. Hashim gets married to Salma binti Akwa, I mean Sal Salma binti Akwa from the Bani Najjar tribe. After staying with her for some time, she conceives, and while and when she had conceived, Hashim undertakes a trade journey and on his trade journey in the place of Gaza, Gaza today, Hashim passes away. And when he passes away in Gaza, Salma binte Akwa, the father of Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives birth to Abdul Muttalib. Abdul Muttalib was known as Shaiba. He said the reason why he was known as Shaiba is because he had one strand of white hair when he was born. Due to that, he was known as Shaiba. And he was also known as Abdul Muttalib. Inshallah, in our next program, we will take on the matter from the grandfather of our beloved Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq of understanding the greatness of our beloved Nabi Kareem, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا